Hey, deserving listeners, Darcy and Stacy from 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. Welcome. It's so great for you both to be here. Hey, licensed marriage and family therapist like myself. That's good to see. You know, we were engaged. It's called off. We're not technically together as a couple right now. And it's hard because I do care and I know he cares. It's just I need more consistency from him. I feel like, you know, the way we communicate is not great at all. And I think he's afraid to open up and be vulnerable and really tell me what he's truly feeling. Okay. Actually, that's legit. He is a little closed off. I wonder what contributes to that, state, Darcy. But anyway, so, okay. Yeah, he's a little closed off. He's a little non-spontaneous. He's a little withdrawn. And absolutely, let's work on That's a legit thing. Great. Is that toxic, gaslighting, malignant narcissist kind of behavior? <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but like the accusations, is that like super manipulative that he's reserved? Sometimes I feel her trust problems, which is coming from past relationships. You know, she being hurt, she being manipulated, she being lied, she being cheated. I try never to give a reason to don't trust me. So nothing that you do to really bring it on. Um, I don't know. Maybe I do. No, I okay, things are starting good. He is reiterating something that he said, I remember, last season that he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to make a mistake because I know what triggers her based on what her worries are about past relationships. And I think what he's saying is I try to be very careful about what I say and what I do. And sometimes I just don't do anything or say anything because I'm worried that something bad will happen. The therapist clarifies and says, so you don't do anything. I, I don't know what she meant, but I think she might have been implying so you do nothing to trigger her. Was it just a, an assessment question or was it kind of like a, a challenging question? I don't know. The past go, I'm not trying to bring the past up. I'm trying to avoid past patterns. I want to break patterns. I don't want to be the same Darcy I was in the past. So hopefully the therapist will key in on this. I mean, it's really early. This mindset that she has that I'm trying to not do the past. Okay, great. In order to not do the past, you must analyze the past. You must look into the past and say, how did I get there? If you don't look at history, you are doomed to repeat it. So just saying, I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. Now, I'm guessing that for a lot of people, uh, for her, which is true for a lot of people, is they don't want to look there because they're ashamed and it's painful. And so they, they just have this mindset, oh, now I don't want to dwell on the past. I want to move forward. I'm guessing that that's what's happening to allow those things to happen again. The things that you've done, like you can't make excuses for that. I've had trust issues with my past relationships. Okay, hopefully we'll get some examples. So she says, you can't make excuses for what you've done. Okay, hopefully, like what? Give us some data. Regardless, I have a hard time trusting Georgie because he's closed off. He doesn't take any accountability, he lies. So he's closed off. Okay, that's, I think, an accurate depiction. He's pretty blank sometimes. He's pretty withdrawn, pretty reserved. I, I mean, I wouldn't say he's terribly so. He he just kind of defaults to that. And of course, when you berate him and accuse him of things, I mean, just think, Darcy has never apologized for accusing him around the money in the sock, for accusing him around the friend of a friend of a friend who said, you're just in it, you're, you're just in it for the money for going to, I mean, the, the things that she's never apologized for. <laughs> I wonder if this whole season is just gonna be me just saying the same thing. He said that when I was in Turkey with her that he was in Virginia doing massages, which is a blatant lie. No, it was sarcastic to her sister oh, because- being sarcastic. Yeah, because oh. she made me really uncomfortable. She didn't take it that way. She got very upset. Well, Georgie, Georgie. <laughs> Not helping the situation, Georgie. Okay, so you were lying. You weren't being sarcastic. That was a flat out lie. Now, you could easily say, or not easily, but it would have been better to say, yeah, I did lie. Because I don't know, in the moment she was just so pressuring and she was being really rude. She was attacking me and I panicked. And I, yeah, it's wrong that I lied. It was stupid. So, okay. But he's even kind of lying about the lying, which is this what is this the tip of the iceberg that we don't see that Darcy sees is this because if he was that quick to lie, is that what we have now it would be a system, right, that there would be like the accusations and then the lies and then the accusations. So 
actually, maybe we're getting into the meat of the matter where they both play a part. It was really rude to me, and I don't feel really comfortable to answer any questions anymore. Because like, she was really. asking you questions, so that was rude. So you did massages in Virginia? No. I feel less than a man when I'm not working and I don't provide. So I feel emasculated. Okay, yeah, I, I get it for sure. And he, she, he was being berated in that moment. So I get it, but why lie? Now, maybe we're seeing this tendency. Maybe that's what, and I think, so I would be surprised if things were happening off camera that we weren't being exposed to that Darcy would have a hard time articulating that because she has a hard time describing things, I think, effectively, to, to me anyway. And so I guess there's a possibility that this has been happening and she had a hard, you know, she would just sort of rant about lies but never provide any examples, at least what was on TV. So maybe this, this, is, this is interesting, actually. I, I thought for sure he wasn't lying because I just, I mean, I, the way he said it, it sounded a little sketchy, but... I, I'm surprised that he would actually do that. So I lied to her. So since he's not working, I've pretty much paid for everything, which I was okay with, but I thought eventually he'd get on his feet, figure out what he wants to do. Maybe he's transitioning to another career or something. All right, so for you therapists out there, this is where you get pulled into the relationship, which is okay on a certain level, but... The key here is to avoid getting into a discussion of content and more of a discussion of process. Because the fact that he's not working isn't the problem. The, the, the problem is the way they talk to each other and the way that they take care of each other, the way they own their own issues. And, and, but it's, it's easy to get sucked in. And actually, it's, you know, for you therapists out there who, who watch this show, watching this show can be a very good way to practice your kind of transference management because it's depending on where you're at in your life and your own biases, it, it's possible that in this moment you might get sucked in and say, yeah, Georgie, how come you aren't working? And then as a therapist, you kind of gear the con the conversation around that, uh, around that idea, subtly pressuring him, subtly giving the idea of it's like, yeah, what's up with that kind of a thing. You might not say it that way, but essentially that's where you're taking the session. Instead of taking the session to, okay, Darcy, how would you like to say that to him? How, let's have a conversation. It doesn't really matter what the topic is, but they clearly have a hard time talking about things while owning their own feelings and taking care of the other person. Like that. I just feel he doesn't tell me his life plans. I don't want to be used. I'm not no sugar mama, never gonna be. And he has a lot of debt. Okay, actually, Darcy's been doing pretty well. I mean, if I just, if, if now that I know that he was lying, the thing she has brought up has actually been pretty healthy, I think. She said he's reserved. She says he lied, and then he did lie. And good on him for admitting it. Bad on him for lying. Why would you do that? And then she's also bringing up uh, this idea that she doesn't want to be used. And the fact that he's not working uh, concerns her in this way. So, yeah, I think that all that is, is reasonable for Darcy, for sure. You know, always in my life I've been working, being proactive. Now when being stuck there in quarantine, it's killing me because I want to be proactive. I want to show her that I want to do things. I'm trying. Yeah, and I don't know the details of his profession, but I imagine being a massage therapist during the quarantine. It, it, they usually shoot this months before they air it. So, but even right now, I mean, with all the things that are happening right now. Anyway, point is, is that I don't know, but I'm guessing, particularly in certain parts of the country, that either legally you can't do massage therapy, the massage therapists have to close their shop, or two, customers aren't going. Like me, for example, I need a haircut, but uh, I'm not because of Omicron. I don't know when this will when this video will be published, but um, right now Omicron is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And although it seems to be less likely to harm people, especially for the vaccinated, um, I just don't want to be a part of the vector uh, that could cause harm with other people. Obviously, I don't want to be sick myself. There's a slight risk that I could have something horrible happen to me. So we're shutting down again, and, and I would not, I, I, I'm not going to, I had a haircut appointment scheduled, and I canceled it because um, uh, of those concerns. 
So I don't know if for him he has uh, that, you know, he's impacted by that. You know, I could see that. But it does raise that concern for Darcy of just like, well, find something else to do. But maybe that's hard. Who's like the better listener, would you say? Um, we don't hear each other. We talk over each other. Couples do this. Right. And you're like, how can you not see it how I right, see right. it? I'm just trying to like understand him, but he gets defensive and then he spins it on me and then that's a trigger and then we both. I think she's describing herself. Uh, uh, Georgie probably does that as I'm trying to, I mean, in terms of what we've seen on camera, Georgie, had he done that? I'm sure he did when he, at the, by the end of the season, but yeah. So it's a good first session. They're exploring things. They need literally two years of therapy beyond, at weekly sessions to really, because there's so many little things that they need to be drilling down on, you know? So hopefully that can happen. I, I don't have, of course, it's first session, and I don't have super high hopes that everything will be changed. I don't have any hopes that everything's going to be changed. So it's good. You know, they're, they're exploring things. There's like 10 different things happening, and they're seeing one side. Each person sees it from their perspective, and they keep escalating up, up, up. They're just going up instead of calming and attuning to one another they're just raising and escalating their volume yeah that's a good way to put it i couldn't have put it better myself and i feel more relaxed that she sees it accurately <laughs> it's like maybe maybe that uh, she can really help again it's gonna take more than one session so hopefully that'll happen i'm saying maybe sometimes the way how how i'm saying things exactly. is not the right way so she understands me in a different way i want to be open to show her, you know, more love, more attention, to be more patient. But sometimes I feel like I'm not understand, I'm not here. You don't feel heard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going really well. Good, really good for a session. Hopefully they can continue to go. He's saying, I try to listen, but sometimes I don't feel heard. It's, it's universal. Uh, every couple that I've ever worked with, exact same essential problem, which is their problem. This wasn't easy to hear at all. I'm always trying to be understanding and listen to him, and I probably didn't listen as much as I should have. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm emotionally invested in this. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I've watched Darcy for so long. I, I have so many hopes where I just want her to be happy. I want. I like. I like Georgie. I like Darcy. I want her to be happy. I want this therapist to have a success. I think she can really, you know, feel good about herself after this session. So, it, I was like, oh no. Darcy was saying, well, I didn't like hearing that <laughs> when he said that he didn't feel heard, and I was like, oh no, she's going to get defensive. But then she warmed up. She's like, oh, I don't want him to feel unheard. That's great, Darcy. You, because. She let it in. He said, I don't feel heard sometimes. And she could have defended against that, right? She should have said, no, you're wrong. I always hear you. But she let it in. She's like, oh, maybe he's right. I'm going to try to be in his shoes. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I don't want to make, I don't want to make him feel that way. You know, I don't know what I did. I can't really think of it right now, but I must have done something to make him feel that way, which it sounds like that's where she's at, which is, which is great. Have we seen Darcy in a fight where even a glimmer of hope was happening during the fight other than right now? Right. And I'm sorry. I've been hurt in the past by Georgie's behavior and demeanor, and it's hard to forget that. But Georgie's really making an effort. It's really hard for Georgie to open up and be vulnerable like this, and that shows me that Georgie has changed for real. Okay, good. That she's seeing it that way i don't i feel like georgie has been vulnerable from the beginning I, he especially last season i i think he was able to express himself i think he does it in a very deadened way a, a demeanor that is very i mean deadens a strong word a very subdued way that it might be hard for darcy to really feel the impact of it maybe that's what's what's going on it gives me hope but it is going to take work and it's not going to be fixed overnight I just want you to know that, you know, when you're vulnerable like this, this is what makes me feel open and loving you more. Like, it makes me trust you more. 
Yeah, a big part of the uh, function of couples therapy is vulnerability and attunement or acceptance of that vulnerability, hearing and seeing that vulnerability. I have worked with so many couples where they start the session and they're, they hate each other, they're, they're on the brink of divorce. And we talk and talk and talk and midway through the session, they can get to a place where they can open up a little bit, be vulnerable, and then boom, the other person's like, oh, you know, because it's this shift from, you're a jerk face on purpose for me, to me. You, you woke up this morning and essentially decided you were gonna deny me, you were gonna withdraw from me, you were gonna hurt me, you were gonna not think about my feelings, you, you, you don't care, you just don't care. To, oh, you were hurt, that's why you did that. And you're hurt because you love me so much and you depend on me so much and you need this, rela- and you, you value my opinion so much and you're so afraid of losing me, that's why you were so hurt. And that's why you did that thing that I interpreted as you being a jerk face. You know, oh my God, I love you so much. You know, if we can get there, then we can do a lot of good. The hope is, is that I'm always trying to do with couples is that they can do it in the moment, not when they come into my office, that they can do it at the time. Because the amount of days in between the fight and coming into my office, you know, four days or so of, a lot of stress and a lot of disdain towards each other takes a toll on the relationship. You build up resentment, you build up disdain and demoralization, and you start thinking about leaving the person. Warmed my heart. I think today was the start of something good. I think I'm ready to put the work in. I hope you are too and willing to try. Does that mean continuing to go to therapy? Does that mean more than one session? Uh, you know, this this show, it's, I think literally every single time we've seen people go to therapy, it's only been for one session. We saw Mike and Natalie, one session. We saw Darcy, one session. We saw Natalie herself with more than one session over video chat, maybe. We saw Asuelu and Kalani, one session. Uh, There have been others. So is that just the thing? (laughs) Hopefully it'll be more than one. I want to say sorry for making you feel uncomfortable on walking in our shows. I want to apologize for lying. Yeah, I have not never like something against you, never against nobody. Okay, good. I mean, it's not an extensive lie, but I'm sorry for lying. I should not have done that. Okay, good. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.